Uh, September 21st of last year, um, I had uh, bought some parts from Camping World uh, through service and uh, was pretty happy with them and anyway decided to walk out on the lot even though I owned a big motor home. Um, took a walk out on the lot and they had a, uh, it's called a 420 Fusion, uh, which is a 43 foot toy hauler. Got to thinking I wouldn't have to put my Harleys behind my motor home, I could put them in the toy hauler. Uh, though I had a, uh, because I had a large truck to pull it. So anyway, started talking to him, bought it, um, uh, turned around and um, told him that I would be in on such and such day, and that, and that happened to be the 21st of September. Uh, that I'd give him a check. I didn't do any financing through him. And, um, you know, I expected it clean um, in, in a deliverable condition. Deliverable condition. Uh, when I went up to meet with them, talk to them, um, in turn, I had met with Scott, was the sales manager. Is it okay to mention names? Mike? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you've okay. interacted with all those people, so. Okay. Um, I did. I interacted with a lot of people. Um, so anyway, I met with him and uh, told him the, the coach still wasn't clean. He said, don't worry about it. They'll have it spotless time we get done with paperwork. Um, had a lot of items already uh, listed that need to be fixed, like the skirt on it had blotches. Uh, there was no fastener on the glass in the shower door. Uh, these were just visible items. Um, he said, no problem, they take care of it through warranty. Um, so anyway, I went ahead and bought it, paid for it, went out, and the thing was still a pigsty. It was an absolute mess. Uh, the camera had been stolen out of it. Not their fault, I'm sure. I'm sure some customer walking through had taken it. Uh, they said they'd replace it, and uh, they later did, sent one in the mail. Um, this thing has two cameras, one on my, uh, on my Harleys, uh, trained on the toy room, and the other one in the back, just to keep an eye on traffic. Uh, so I went ahead and took off 5 a.m. the next morning to go to North Carolina, which I told them I was going to do. As it was, uh, my girlfriend, uh, her back went out trying to load it because I was out cleaning it. I wasn't going to pull it down the road in its current condition. Uh, anyway, got to North Carolina and only spent a couple of days, come back, um, had a whole list of items, furnace didn't work, water heater didn't work correctly, just a lot of stuff. Um, anyway, told them about it, called them, they made the list, I put it on my computer as well, to make sure these items were taken care of. I later uh, set it up for uh, November the 15th when they said they could take it in, uh, so I did so. It was in there in t for two and a half months. Um, Every time I had called to check on it, uh, it was nothing but lies. Uh, well, this is done, that's done, everything's really finished up on it. Um, but the skirt came in wrong, so we ordered a new one, the correct one. Um, when it came time to actually pick it up, they, or they called me, um, um, it was right at two and a half months later on a Monday, told me that the coach would be ready by Wednesday. I, in turn, had already talked to Chris, the manager, told him my dissatisfaction in the organization for the maintenance and everything that had gone on, how filthy it was. Chris, uh, which was a general manager, told me, he goes, well, I'll take care of the, the cleanliness. He said, I'll have that thing polished for you the time you come in to get it. Um, as it was, I called two days later then, and I apologize for going back here a little bit. Um, just to make sure that it was going to be ready, I called the service manager, which is Jason, uh, Jason told me that uh, the skirt had come in that Monday, uh, they'd get it on and I could take delivery on it um, probably Tuesday. Well then I'd asked him, I said, well did you get a service order to clean the trailer from the manager? And he said, no I did not. I said, well that's pretty upsetting to me. Um, he told me he'd get this thing clean because it's been a mess ever since and uh, I'm the one that had to clean it in the beginning. He said, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. And he said, but if you'll give me an extra day. And I said, well, I'm very amicable to that. So we decided on Thursday instead. Um, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm lying. Decided on Wednesday. He called me Wednesday, told me it wasn't going to be quite ready. Please come out on Thursday. So I didn't call him. I just went out on Thursday. My girl took time off to, to go out with me because we were going to pick it up. It still wasn't ready. A lot of the items they told me were done prior to the skirt were not done. Um, so I was very upset with him, told him what I thought of the company, told him about the idea that I uh, had been paying all this warranty for two and a half months and didn't have a, a, a travel trailer. Uh, he said he'd take care of it right away. And I said, well, you haven't even replaced all the skirt. They told me they had. And I said, then why are there blotches on a few pieces? 
And the service guy that worked on it was standing there. He goes, sir, I'll put those on. Well, they went ahead and replaced them. Uh, so that looked great. But the awning still wasn't fixed. There was just items that weren't done yet. Um, so he told me he promised he'd have it ready the following day. And um, I get out. Uh, I'd been there two and a half hours that Thursday night. Come Wednesday or Friday, I went out. I uh, got out there at, um, I think it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Thought I might as well give them most of the day. It still wasn't done. Still wasn't clean. Then I was really bent out of shape. And then I noticed there was a hole in the, in the fiberglass in the front of it. They had hit it. Um, he knew I was very upset at that point in time. And I said, look, I've got a friend from out of state here. We're supposed to cook out tonight. Um, and here I am messing around here for two and a half hours. As it was, I was there till 6.30 that night uh, from 3 o'clock. Um, they said they would uh, get the hole fixed and get it to me the following week, and I told them that wasn't going to happen. I, uh, I'm taking it with me. I'm tired of all the driving. Uh, it was 45 minutes each way to, to get out there. And I said, you can fix it at my farm, um, and we'll deal, with it, uh, we'll deal with it down there. He said he would. Since uh, the, the tanks, the LP tanks were filled in the beginning, I never used the gas. When I got it back this time, the tanks were empty, and I mean bone dry. There's a hole in the coach. Um, the, the, the cameras, I've got to replace them myself because they wouldn't communicate with the cameras that are on board, so I've got to take them all down. But bottom line, um, it is just getting very frustrating, all the lies from all parties. Um, the sales manager, and I told the general manager this as well, all he wanted to do was talk about how great I was and, um, and uh, how well I've done and this and that and uh, instead of uh, taking care of the travel trailer and getting me a good operating coach to, uh, to take home. Um, so anyway, I, I told them all that uh, I will never do business with them again, and I won't. I'll keep my word to that. Um, I've still got a travel trailer down here. Now I've had it over a month. It still has a hole in it. They haven't sent anybody down to replace it or to fix it, um, you know, it, it's just very frustrating. I, Tell me uh, something, Camping World is a large company, right? They have uh, locations all over the country. Do you that's know, correct. Do you know if they are corporate owned or they are franchisees? I am not sure. I assume that they're corporate owned. Um, I would like to handle what you just said. Um, I've got a very nice uh, uh, country coach motorhome and I had it serviced by Camping World in, in Asheville, North Carolina, which is actually Arden, uh, but it's south, south of Asheville a little bit by the airport. Um, I've got no complaints with those people at all. They did exactly what they said they would do and when they said they would do it. Um, this one here, local, I couldn't tell you if they're a, a franchise. I assume that they're corporate. I haven't uh, went far enough to check that out yet. Yeah, uh, pretty much uh it would be interesting to find out what corporate is thinking about it. What we're going to do, we're going to actually pass your message to the people in their general customer service. And uh, we're going to publish this video. Well, I, I will tell you, Mike, I've talked to uh, customer service with corporate. Um, they've called me three times. Uh, the first two times was a man asked me if I was happy with my service. The first time he called me, I was only a couple of weeks into the deal and I haven't even gotten the trailer back and I said, well, there's nothing to be happy about. I still don't have a travel trailer and uh, uh, so I can't tell you I'm happy or not. Then he calls me after I had all these problems with him and I kind of unloaded on him a little bit and I said, well, what the hell is to be happy about? Um, I don't have a trailer still and I've been lied to many times and all he had to say to me was, thank you, have a nice day, bye, and hung up. A gal called me last week. Um, I believe it was a week ago Wednesday and um, asked me if I was happy with my service and I said well now this is the third time I've got called are you actually going to listen and she goes well that's what I'm here for she was actually the most pleasant good individual to chat with I told her all the grievances she told me she was sorry to hear that and uh, she's sure that a superior of hers would be calling me I gave it till Friday night for somebody to call me and that's when I called when I emailed you guys mm -hmm. I have not yet gotten a call from anybody so they clearly don't care. And, um, and this isn't about money, Mike. This is about what's right and what's wrong. I paid a lot of money for that travel trailer. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a thirty or $40,000 travel trailer. And um, 
And, and I don't care. I don't care if it was $10,000. Um, I still should have been treated like a good customer. Um, I paid them as I said I would do. And I expect the, uh, a, good, uh, a good unit when I, uh, in return. And I believe you, you told me you are also paying for their warranty, right? So they would uh, warrant the product. So that's, that's correct. Well, I that's paid for it. That's extra yes. money that they receive every month. That's exactly right. I paid the extended warranty too, as well. Um, he spent more time trying to push me on that than he did on, uh, on anything else. And, and I know they make a lot of money on that extra warranty. Understood. But, I'm sorry? No, I understood. Derek, uh, thank you. Uh, how would you, uh, I mean, your story is self-explanatory. I usually ask here a question, how would you like them to address your issue today? Well, first of all, I, they, they need to act like they care about it. Um, they clearly don't. Um, and so at this point in time, um, first of all, the hole needs to be fixed. Somebody needs to identify the issues here local that uh, they've got very poor management. I've been glad to tell them that. I've been at a point that I wanted to rent a, a billboard out on Interstate 80 right outside Camping World. And I'm not kidding about this. Um, I actually um, checked into what it's going to cost me. And um, I am very much prepared to put my name, my phone number, and my picture on the billboard and tell anybody that wants to buy a Camping World, please talk to me first. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I got you. Nice. <laughs> so, um, so Terry, what are we gonna do? We're gonna supplement your review with this nice video. Uh, we're gonna also push it to Camping World customer service, and we're gonna publicize it on Facebook and Twitter. It's not I eighty uh, type of reach. It's probably a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> And it's free. <coughs> Perfect. So, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to add? It's not. I, you know, I'm just extremely frustrated. Um, you know, I'm, I can't even be polite and be nice to them at this point. I, 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 yeah, I guess maybe I should add this. Um, after we finally, uh, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Mike, I do not lie. Um, it doesn't work it, it, it always comes back to bite you i own a business i don't need somebody coming back and saying that i um belittled somebody and, and uh, or anything else i mean i'm just i tell it like i see it um bottom line so anyway after i finally was able to take the trailer out of there it still took them 30 minutes to get it out of the lot by then the doors were locked and closed uh, or closed and locked and um so I went up, um, was beating on the door, nobody came, trying to find out when they were going to get it out. They finally got it out the lot, like I say, about 30 minutes later. Just to set it down, Jason looked at me and he said, are we done? And I said, oh, we are so done. You guys can leave so I can get the hell out of here. So they walk away. Now, like I said, the doors are locked. They're having to let themselves in. I go to, 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 to put the trailer on my truck. The battery's dead. And... Um, I was absolutely livid. So now I go back up, beat on the door, nobody comes. I finally see an individual, and he happened to be the same guy that worked on the trailer. So I yelled at him, I mean at the top of my lungs. He finally stops in his tracks, can I help you? And I said, yeah, the damn, damn battery's dead. I can't even put the trailer on top of my truck. And uh, he goes, sir, don't worry about that, we'll take care of it. They bring a charger out, it's dead. And he brings Jason with him. And of course, I'm pretty bent out of shape as it is. I haven't got to have dinner with my friend. It's uh, been a friend of mine since 1979. So I'm livid. So the charger's dead. They take it back in. He walks out with a battery in his hands. He goes, I am going to give you, and this is Jason, I'm going to give you a brand new, bigger battery and put in that trailer. I look at the battery. I look at the trailer. And I said, really? He looks at the battery and goes, Oh my God, when it rains, it pours. He turned right around, it was a smaller battery, <laughs> takes it back inside, comes back out with the right battery, puts it in the trailer, and I said, now you guys can go so I can get the hell out of this place. And that was finally the end of it. So I, I told this story to somebody that knows the executives for Camping World last night. He happens to be a, a very good friend of mine. I didn't know he knew these guys. He was livid when he heard all of this. So. I'm not going to say anything that's not true because it'll bite you, like I said. So this, these are the facts. 
Understood. Derek, thank you very much. Very much appreciate that. And we'll try to spread the word as much as we can. Sounds great, Mike. Hey, and thank you very much. I appreciate your interest in this. Thank you, Derek. Take care. Bye-bye. You, you too. You too, sir. Goodbye.